What's going on, people? Welcome to the King's Monologue. We're back again for another one. Now, who knew there was someone out there doing exactly the same thing that I'm doing? Um, I was actually really shocked by this, but um, I can't remember actually how I came across it. But what I can tell you is that there's another reconstruction artist out there and they take an almost identical approach to the approach that I take. The name of this reconstruction artist is Baz Utowicz. Um, he's a European. Um, I think he's of Dutch descent. I should have really <laughs> researched this. It'll probably come up in his article because I'm going to read that as a part of this video anyway. But yeah, he's a reconstruction artist. Uh, he's European. He's not black or an Afrocentrist or anything like that. He just literally takes the same approach that I do and basically says, look, if there's artwork out there, artists over a certain period of time have gotten quite good at what they do. They know how to make accurate representations of people and we should be able to draw quite accurate estimates of what these people look like. I was um, really quite taken to his work. I think it's actually really quite good. And what I'd like to do in this video, quite interestingly, is actually look at some of his reconstructions and do a side by side comparison. So C, well, actually, if we take two reconstruction artists who are using the same process, do they come up with something that's completely different, thus kind of invalidating the whole process? Or do they come up with something that's very similar, thus giving some validation to that process? So that's basically what we're going to do today. And yeah, I don't really want to talk too much. I just kind of want to get straight into it. So yeah, let's let's have a look at some of what Baz does. So the website that I'm referencing is a website called um, My Modern Met, which is obviously linked to the Met. Um, and this is a bit of a profile on him. So I'm going to actually just read through this. So it's quite interesting. So it says here, have you ever wondered what famous historical figures like Nefertiti and Cleopatra look like in real life? Well, Baz Utowicz might be able to show you a pretty good guess. The Dutch photographer, Dutch, there you go, and digital artist creates amazing AI portraits of famous historical figures using innovative and in innovative neural network reconstructions. Now, to be clear, I do use a bit of AI um, in my approach. I don't use innovative neural networks, if I'm gonna to be totally honest with you. Um, I do use other bits of kind of reconstructive software, um, but it's a, it's a similarish approach. His most recent additions to the ongoing series transports, to the ongoing series transport viewers, to, transports, I should say transports, I'm sure, transports viewers to ancient Egypt, the Renaissance, and 18th century Europe, among other periods. So yeah, he's actually even interested in the same periods that I have, because trust me, I'm gonna get, get into 18th century Europe and actually even before then, um, you guys are gonna be shocked at some of the stuff that we're gonna produce. So please do stay tuned, because um, I've got some shocking reconstructions coming your way. Obviously always try to back, well, always backed up by history and data, not just by my own biases. But yeah, let's move on. To create these portraits, Utowicz uploads numerous references of the person's likeness to AI applications. Then he makes small adjustments to the pro. That's kind of similar to what I do until he is satisfied with the result. These deep learning networks are trained with thousands of photographs of human faces and are able to create near photorealistic people from scratch or fit uploaded faces in a latent space of a total of a total of everything the model has learned. Utwich explains, I think the human face hasn't changed dramatically over a thousand over thousands of years. I totally agree. And apart from hairstyles and makeup, people that lived long ago probably looked very much like us. And I don't totally agree. We know that, you know, modern man has existed for anywhere between 250,000 to 4 million years, if you're going to go by the longest estimates. So, you know, obviously that's a huge window, but the point being, even if it's just 250,000 years over the last 1,000 years or 2,000 years or 3,000 years, if we're going to talk about ancient Egypt, that's 1% of the time that we've existed as anatomically modern man. So in that time, how much change will you have seen in the phenotypes of men? I don't think you would have seen a lot. I think the biggest impact on change on modern society probably would have been caused, unfortunately, by genocide. I do think we've lost whole groupings of people, whole groupings of people with interest in phenotypes. I also think racism has had a massive impact on the way that we look. And I know that might sound bizarre, but it's caused um, mixing to become restricted. It's caused um, 
ostracization has caused certain types of phenotype that might have been common um, to become uncommon um, in modern society as people who maybe looked a certain way but had a certain culture maybe were pushed out towards a different culture and mixed with that culture and that phenotype was lost. When I say this, I think of the dark-skinned, blue-eyed Irish who I haven't really touched on on this channel yet, but I will get to. There's so many um, different things that I obviously I'm going to be touching on in the very near future. So please do obviously uh, stay tuned and get subscribed if you haven't subscribed already. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let me keep reading. <laughs> Let me keep reading on. Um, I think the human faces have changed dramatically over thousands of years. And apart from hairstyles and makeup, people that live long ago probably look very much like us. But we are used to seeing them often in distorted styles of ancient art forms that existed long before the invention of photography. Absolutely. Not only... Not only does he reimagine real life royals such as Tutankhamun and Elizabeth I in realistic portraits, but he also applies his digital manipulations to famous works of art, including Michelangelo's David sculpture and Leonardo's um, Da Vinci Mona Lisa painting. Um, I'm glad he's chosen the same um, kind of um, famous ancient Egyptian portraits that I've decided to work on because um, it gives us a, a good comparison point. Just as photography changed the shape of classical painting techniques um, based, sorry, on class of classical painting, techniques based on artificial intelligence will start influencing and inspiring art and post photography, to which continues. AI applications are developing at an incredible speed and it will influence almost all segments of our society. And that's another thing that I have to agree with because actually looking at my, even my early reconstructions, how to my current reconstructions or my latest ones and there's been a massive change I, I like to think there's been a, a massive improvement and that's very much linked to the improvement of the capabilities of AI software so there you go um once again I agree yep so this is his so at this stage I'm gonna pop his first reconstruction so this is his reconstruction of Tutankhamun or Tutankhamun and I look at this reconstruction and, and once again I, I actually quite like it um it has a very, um, I wouldn't say, it's not a completely lost phenotype. It's got a very Northern Sudanese feel to it. A very Northern Sudanese feel. My reconstruction, in fact, I'll just pull up my reconstruction side by side so we can kind of circumcise, compare them. My reconstruction, I feel, has a more horn African appearance. But I f and it's, it slightly leans more towards East Africa. I feel this one leans more towards the north of Sudan, even current southern Egypt. And I, I, I quite like it. You can see there's a similarity between the two. I think my teen um, Tutankhamun that you can see here, I leaned more towards some of his what I classified as his later portraits but what I did miss and with what I think he's captured quite well here is the fullness of Tutankhamun's face I think that's something I missed I, I went for something that's a bit too slim I think had mine be a bit more filled out um, which would have been the correct thing to do it probably would look quite similar to the one that he's done um, um, complexion wise I think that's where there's a slight disagreement between his kind of AI processes and my processes in that my approximation has come out darker. And those of you who've seen the video know that my reasoning towards the kind of darker complexion lean towards the golden throne of Tutankhamen. Um, I found that the golden throne and even his mannequin, that kind of like copper, dark, that kind of dark slash copper red hue, I think I see that in modern day Nubians. And that's what I try to kind of recreate with the complexion of my one. Um, I feel like his one is only, is, I mean, we're talking about a, a, a very tiny margin here, but a very tiny margin is a little, a little, a little bit fairer, um, more towards kind of your Southern Egyptian. Um, but if you look at them, you know, facially, they're not miles apart. So there is, you know, there is some kind of similarity here. I think, I, but I wouldn't look at his one and say, oh, that's really poor. I wouldn't say that at all. I actually think that's a, a really good approximation of how you could draft the face of Tutankhamen. Um, and I like it. 
and I like it. I'm not gonna lie, I actually do like it. Um, so yeah, that's the first one. Let's let's move on to number two. So our second one is going to be here we go, Roulette Ah, Akhenaten. So this is his reconstruction of Akhenaten. Now, once again, I think this is really good reconstruction. Um yeah, I'm not gonna say too much. I'm just gonna pull mine side by side and see how close or far these approximate to one another. So this is my reconstruction of Akhenaten. Let me just quickly resize that. There we go. So you can see with my reconstruction, I mean, <laughs> they. I'll be honest with you, this could very well be, his reconstruction could very well be an older version of my reconstruction. If I'm gonna be totally frank, you know, they look like the same person. Complexion wise, we're pretty much spot on. Um, you know, the difference in complexion is, you can see from a lighting issue, it's just kind of like the way that we've chosen to kind of light our images. Um, other than that, that's roughly the same complexion we've gone there. And I think that's quite, that's quite satisfying for me because when I approximated the complexion of Akhenaten, it was done based purely on the physicalities of the face that I was presented with. And that was my justification for it. There was no kind of like defining piece of artwork like in the case of Tutankhamun. It was just kind of like, well, this is what I've approximated based on how he looks and it looks right. And seeing how Bass has approached his reconstruction or at least how the AI has approached it really gives me a great degree of satisfaction because I'd look at the features of his reconstruction and I'd make exactly the same choice. So we got two very similar looking human beings. I mean, that could easily be an older version of this. Re so, I mean, this is quite satisfying to look at. We're two completely different reconstruction artists with slightly differing approaches, but one thing in common, and that is that we just want to do honest reconstructions of the artwork that we see. And you can see here that, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll let you make the judgment on how close those are. Let's move to the next one. So next one's Queen T, Queen T. Uh, and I, I have to say before I show mine, this is a brilliant reconstruction. Uh, my reconstruction Queen T was one of my earliest ones and I'd, I'd probably change it slightly if I was to make it now. Um, but I really love this. And there are actually some aspects of this that I like better than mine, but some aspects of mine that I like better than his. So let me just quickly pull up my one and then we'll kind of make the comparisons there so here's my reconstruction of queen t now you can see facially we've both been very committed to being very honest we've both captured her expression i think incredibly well um we've both captured kind of her her face quite well we've taken a different approach to the eyes um i'd say his looks more realistic if i'm going to be totally honest with you as much as i like mine um, I feel like I'd do a better job if I was to revise it and update it now, just giving it a little bit more of a realistic look. I also prefer his nose, if I'm going to be totally frank with you. The reason I prefer the nose on, on his one is because I actually made an error and I didn't think it was an error when I made it, but someone pointed this out to me. The, and it wasn't an error, the error is not my fault by the way. The so yeah the base of the nose here should never be wider than the bridge and you can see how mine goes in and goes out i did that based on the sculpture of queen t and based on that someone did point out that the sculpture has probably been mildly tampered in an attempt to kind of narrow the nose and they've made that error of kind of making it go in from the base and then out towards the end and I had to check that for a minute. I said, is that true? And I, I looked through hundreds and hundreds of portraits and, you know, and obviously looking through my work and it is, it is true. So if I was to redo this nose, I wouldn't narrow it in, in order to match the portrait. I'd do what he's done here and just make it naturally kind of like flare out from the base towards the end. So that's the difference I'd make. The only other differences I can see between our port, well, there's quite a few differences. Mine's a little bit darker. Um, I'm happy with the complexion of mine, but I'm more equally happy with the complexion of his. I'd say, you know, <laughs> I'd be happy for Queen T to kind of fall anywhere between or on top of these two kind of complexion ranges. I'm not so in love with the complexion that I chose that I would discount 
or discard the complexion he's chose there. So I think it's quite good. And I think this this is an important point, actually, because I, I, I kind of glossed over this earlier when he mentions that people haven't changed that much. I think we have to kind of get away from this. I think many people get scared when they see reconstructions of people that kind of look modern because they think to themselves, well, back then, all black people look like this and all white people look like this and all Chinese people look like this. And everyone's suddenly started mixing <laughs> to create all of this human variation. That is like the furthest thing from the truth. Human variation is as old as mankind. We've been producing, in fact, I would say my estimation, my approximation is in the time of, you know, ancient Egypt, Queen T, King Tutankhamen, etc., New Kingdom, that you probably had much more diversity and variation because you didn't have, you know, racism. You didn't have people who felt restricted to breed with people that looked like them. That wasn't a restriction. It was more of a cultural thing. Do you live where I live? Do you believe what I believe? Um, you know, phenotype based on skin complexion is entirely new. And this is something that I'm going to touch on in the channel because people just think that, you know, I'm obsessed with making ancient Egypt black. No, absolutely not. I'm obsessed with making ancient Egyptians look like how they portrayed themselves as much as possible. And actually, there were, there are going to be reconstructions that I do that are going to look very fair. Some of them are going to, so not every single person in ancient Egypt would have had would have been phenotypically black. There would have been infusions of people from different eras and from different areas, um, particularly towards the um, New Kingdom. One that comes to my mind is um, Nefertari Meritmut. So that's with Nefertari, the wife, wife of Ramesses. I believe she probably would have approximated to looking quite similar to modern Egyptians, modern North Egyptians, whereas Amos Nefertari was incredibly dark skinned from what I can see. So from her portraits, from everything that she's kind of portrayed about herself, you've got a very, very dark skinned Amos Nefertari, who probably would have a similar complexion to Queen um, Queen T here. But then you have a Nefertari Meritmut, wife of Ramesses, from, and from the evidence, she would have been incredibly fair. It's all about being accurate. And I think history will vindicate the truth and history will vindicate work in that regard and this what we're seeing here between the work i'm doing and and baz utu which is doing here is that vindication for for truth essentially so anyway that's queen t let's move on to the next one ah and this is if you didn't recognize nefertiti okay now i don't know why the ai on his side kind of <laughs> did ne nefertiti's hairline like that I, I really couldn't tell you but, um, and you know, once again, uh, yeah, I, I really like this. If I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, I really like this. It's, it seems quite right to me. And I wanna see, well, let's just compare mine side by side and see what I came up with. So once again, complexion wise, almost identical. Obviously mine appears a bit darker, but I'd say once again, that's just a lighting thing. Um, they're just, there's a hair of difference between the complexion, the two complexions that I've been shown here feature wise once again i say this is it's almost spot on um my lips look a little bit a little bit broader but i'd say that's linked to the expression you know i've you know added that kind of ancient egyptian smile that's on a lot of the works and that has influenced the the shaping of the lips but i think relaxed they would probably be quite similar and if you look at everything from from the nose maybe the ears aren't the same but you know the eyes are quite different but all in all you know shape and feature wise these look like similar kind of people they're not the same but you know i'd say once again it's kind of it's kind of vindication you know it's, it's a bit difficult to see because she's not wearing that the hat that my one is wearing but i'd like to think if if she was wearing if the head was covered in fact you know what i could do is a bit of an experiment if i just move that up there like that yeah, there you go. So we can have a little bit of an experiment there. I mean, yeah, they are very different. They're not obviously as similar as the Akhenaten, but there's, you know, they're they're similar enough for one to appreciate the fact that an objective approach 
to this topic will get you to similar outcomes or get you to produce similar outcomes. Now contrast that to some of the ridiculous reconstructions that are being done when it is, you know, literally trying to, you know, Arabize the ancient Egyptians um, and they're totally unwilling to use the portraits as reference points unless the portraits have got you know European Caucasoid features so they kind of pick and choose when you know portraits are appropriate to you know like I said myself and Bass taking a similar objective approach where we're just saying here's the artwork let's get as much of the artwork and kind of try to approximate what someone looks like and look at that we're producing very very similar things so you know in the end I'm actually I mean, I find that a very therapeutic and interesting process to do this. Um, massive, massive shout out to Bas Utuich and the work that he's doing. He's actually on IMDb because um, he does work in, in the film industry too. But um, yeah, massive shout out to him for the work that he's doing. It sounds like he's doing it from a pa passion project perspective, in the same way that I'm doing it. You know, people will question, well, what kind of qualifications do you have? Well, you, you don't need qualifications. What you need is time and dedication and actually an understanding of the human anatomy and photography and how retouching works and how faces work. And it's something from that perspective that is accessible. I am going to branch into um, 3D reconstructions, hopefully sooner rather than later. So that's um, definitely within my roadmap. And like I said, I've got some really exciting videos that are kind of in the wings waiting to go. Um, we're gonna move away from e ancient Egypt before we kind of like sweep back in, but I'm going to surprise you with some of my next videos. So please do get subscribed if you're not already. I'm wearing King Tut today. This is probably my favorite tee that I like to wear. Now, this is the first time I've actually exposed my arms. I feel <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> I feel a little bit exposed on the channel today, um, but there you go. Um, that's it, I'm not gonna keep it for too long. Thank you for tuning into the King's Monologue. Support me on Patreon if you can. Um, if you can't, just hit that like button. That'll be more than enough for me. Thank you so much to everybody for tuning in and I will see you on the next one.